it's Raya here and I'm in my art studio again in the bell tower. Welcome to another studio session and today we're going to talk about process. And I've got some notes here that I'm going to share in just a minute. So I've been doing full-time art for about two and a half years and the importance of process came to my attention a while back. I had a friend in my old art studio and he would come in and talk to me you know, we just chat about art stuff, and I remember he was the first one who brought up this idea of discovering your process and not trying to like implement a process, but really just getting curious of your own process that's already happening, whether you're aware of it or not. But I will just, I'm gonna turn this down, it's a little loud. There we go. Um, I will say it's super helpful it's super helpful if you can get curious, figure out what your own process is, start to pay attention, and that will really help you when you get stuck. Or if you're feeling super lazy, you're feeling like you don't have any purpose, you don't, you know, like when you're in between projects, it can get really hard. And so understanding what part of your process you're in can really, really help you. So I'll just share the one that I just came up with um, having to do with my personal process. So let's see if I can get that in there. Okay, so at the top, I'm kind of going to just say this is where things start, but you know, it's all circular. So I have curiosity or inspiration. Um, but I'll just go over them first. Curiosity or inspiration leading to rabbit trails of curiosity, then they come together and they get some kind of cohesive idea of a piece that I could actually make. And then I begin the execution on whatever said idea is. At some point, usually toward, usually toward like the middle end of something I'm working on, I get kind of stuck right here. And that is when I have to let go and then I get re-inspired and I finish the piece. And then when that piece is finished, I have to get curious again so I can get inspired to start something new and it just keeps going. So currently I've been in the curiosity inspiration part of my phase or part of my process just in this last week because as I've said in my last video, um, I finished my 2020 art collection or painting collection that I was working on and now it's kind of like, all right, what next? What do I want to do next? And this is probably the part of my process that I have the hardest time with because it can feel like, it can really feel like I'm being lazy, like I'm not doing anything important. Like, I, there's just no purpose in my week. It, it can be a really hard kind of point of the process for me, but it's super important. And I have written down here, at the top of my notes right here, right? Don't rush the inspiration stage. It, it might not be, maybe it's not the hardest part of the process for you, but it can be really hard. But it's so important to not rush it because having enough inspiration or excitement or just whatever enough momentum in a direction if you don't have enough of that you won't be able to get through the part of the process where you might get stuck and where it might feel like oh this is just not working I don't like how it looks I don't like how it sounds whatever and it can get easy to give up here and instead of pushing through this part right here um, but if you linger long enough in curiosity, inspiration, you allow yourself to get, get to get curious and to follow, follow those rabbit trails. And I'm speaking to myself here cause I'm totally still working on getting comfortable, really comfortable doing this. Allow yourself to follow the rabbit trails, just see where they go. And it can feel like, man, you know, nothing's happening. <laughs> This isn't purposeful at all, nothing's coming together. But I found for myself, at some point, if I just follow those rabbit trails and I sit on it and I just kind of let it marinate and I don't rush it, I don't try to 
um, just have something to start, which I do have to fight that a little bit. Um, but if I don't rush it, a cohesive idea will come, like it always does. Something, some kind of idea starts to formulate, ideas start coming together from all of these different things I've been interested in, and they form some kind of something I could actually make. And then, once I'm ready, I actually start it. <laughs> uh, and usually this is like really exciting. It's like, ooh, you know, I have this idea. I feel inspired, I feel purposeful, I'm ready to do it. And so like, this is super fun. And then, you know, and then somewhere in between starting it and getting stuck, like in this middle part right here, is kind of the, yeah, like it's, you know, it's working, it's starting to turn into something. And it's just kind of like, uh, it's like a plateau phase. It's not, and I don't mean that as like a negative thing. It's just like, it's just strong and steady in a direction. It's just about showing up and continuing what you started, building on it. Um, the getting stuck phase, I really, or part of the yeah, phase in the process, whatever. I really started to become aware of this one, uh, just especially in like the last year, just more recently, where I get stuck because something will happen where it's like, you know, I've done enough of the piece where it's looking like a thing, I like it, it's interesting, but it's just not quite right. It's not, not, it's not totally where I want it to be, but I don't want to ruin it. It's really that part of the phase where it's like, it's good enough that if you do something too crazy, you, you might ruin it, lose the whole thing, and that would suck. And so... It can start to get a little like, ooh, um, control likes to enter in this phase. Control, like when I start trying to control what I'm making is when I get stuck. Excuse me. And I realized for me, it's right here where uh, I'll, I'll feel as if I have... I have the idea of where the piece is supposed to end up. Like I got some idea of what's happening and I kind of hold on to that and I'm trying to, you know, bring it into being. And that ends up making me feel stuck because then I get, I feel like unsure of what to do next and I, I thought I understood where it was going and then I realized that I don't or it might look different than I thought it did. And that's when I have to let go. And I have, <laughs> that's when I have to let go and realize like, I thought it was this thing, but it's not. I thought it was going this direction, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's going a different way. And I have to like release my grip on the outcome of what it is, whether or not it's good, or you know, I think it's good, or just anything. I just have to let it go. And for some people that might be a really hard part of the process. For myself, I've kind of found it just liberating and fun <laughs> once I'm able to like, you know, let it go. Um, this piece behind me, that, that one right there, uh, I, in earlier videos I had it called the Radish, I ended up changing the name to Transformation. But when I was working on this piece, oh, I think it was early last week, early last week maybe, and I hadn't added any of the poetry yet, which is now my favorite part, I've got all these ripped out pages of a 1896 copy of Ella Will Willcox poetry. So it's all in there and it's awesome. But I had just gotten the idea, I gotten the inspiration from some pieces I saw at uh, a gallery that Josh and I went to. And I was like, yeah, I want to try it. And I was kind of at that part of the, my process, kind of this part of the process with that piece, where I thought I knew where it was going. I thought it was a radish. And I, I kind of got stuck. I just, I didn't know what to do next. It felt like it's not done, but I don't have any great ideas of what to try. And I realized I was sitting on the ground with it, looking at it. And I realized I don't know what it is. I don't know where it's going and I need to make the bold stroke. And if I don't make the bold stroke, then this won't turn into the epic piece that it could be. It might be okay, it might be interesting, but it might not be 
the the type of piece that it could be if you make the bold stroke. Um, I think it's Elizabeth Gilbert in her book Big Magic. She talks about kind of harsh language, but uh, don't be afraid to kill your baby. Basically, like your art creation, whatever that is, is your baby. But if you think of it that way, you might get afraid to do the bold stroke and to kill it, so to speak, like potentially to mess it up. And I decided with that piece, like, even if I ruined it, so what? Like, maybe it would just be a progression, maybe not a progression piece, but like a um, continuation piece where maybe it'd just be a piece where whenever I'm feeling emotional or whatever, I just add to it. Maybe it's not like a piece that gets finished. So I made the bold stroke and I added all of the collage of the poetry and then I kept painting and painting over in layers. And then, and then it was awesome. I got to, uh, or I got to this part of the phase, which is I got re-inspired. Once I let it go, I made the bold stroke, bold move, and I got re-inspired and I got excited again. And then that led to me finishing the piece. And I feel really good about it now. And it was really fun too. So yeah, you got to let go of that desire to hold on to control and hold on to control of the outcome. Um, art, creating, creating really isn't about having control over something. And I feel like there's plenty of people who do think of it that way. And I myself maybe thought of it that way a little bit in the past, where like you're, you're in control of these mediums, the, the, the paint or the paper or the words on the page or your body when you're dancing. And, and there's like this idea of control. But I think really, really it's not that at all. Um, I think control can get in the way of creating the art or of letting the art out, the art that wants to be made. And really it's just about letting go and letting, uh, letting the art come out, letting, uh, what is the word? Submitting yourself to the process, I guess is what I would say. And this is just kind of what it looks like for me. I'm not saying that this is your process, but this is just things that I've noticed that I do. Um, and that's really helpful. That's really helpful because then being in this, this part up here where it's curiosity and inspiration, it's following rabbit trails, it makes me feel more free um, to do that part of the process because I know I'm not being lazy, I'm not being purposeless, this is part of the process, it's an important part of the process of making anything and that gives me freedom to engage it. So here's an example. Just this week, I said that I've, I've been in that kind of part of the process, curious and in, getting curious and inspir, inspired. Yes, curious and inspired. Uh, and for me, I'm doing kind of some functional days on Tuesday and Thursday. And then Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I'm doing my just like free reign, creative, get inspired, make things, whatever I want days. And so for me, Monday, <laughs> I ended up uh, going to like five vintage shops around the city and just looking at stuff, trying to gather inspiration for uh, clothing. I was just getting, starting to get inspired by different uh, fashion styles over the years, over the decades. Um, so I was just like browsing around at vintage stores. <laughs> and then a Wednesday, I, what did I do? I was watching a bunch of videos about steampunk festivals and like cosplay. Um, I was looking on Pinterest at steampunk stuff. I was researching the Renaissance and then I went out and I found this uh, antique shop in the southeast of Portland and I went there and I took a bunch of photos and I looked at steampunky type things, just gears and old stuff and I took photos and I got inspiration and even though I know that's part of the process for me it's still hard like I still struggle with it I'm not I'm not there yet where I just feel like 
woohoo, totally free. There's still a little bit of that like, am I being lazy? Should I do something productive? And it's like a, a desire to justify my time spent on these seemingly random things. But as I've continued this week, following these rabbit trails, it, it's evolved. I've gotten more interesting in like, fantasy fashion and how that has been inspired by styles of fashion throughout time and like different different uh, different eras and then it started to form this cohesive idea in my mind of starting a collection of paintings based on uh, steampunk inspiration and like fantasy fashion inspiration and in in fact I actually started a piece last week, I showed this in my last video, I started a piece last week that I feel like is the first one in this new series. And then I refound an old piece from sometime last year that I never fully finished. And I kind of just like lost the inspiration for it and I was moving and blah, blah, blah. But I refound it and I realized they're perfect together and it is perfect for this new uh, collection of paintings and so now I feel inspired to finish it and to add on to it and I've got all these ideas coming into my mind about adding materials and leather and metal and all these things. So the cohesive idea is beginning to form and probably tomorrow I will start um, execution on finishing the piece I started last week and maybe adding to that old piece and then I'll just continue on. <laughs> So, oh yeah, this is, this is my other little drawing that I did. I'll see if I get that nice and close for you. There we go. This is super, it's similar to this one, but it's slightly different. For this one, I have, um, looking at the process in a bit of a different way. So in this part, I'm outside of a piece, which would be like the curiosity inspiration stage. Like I'm not actively working on something. And then there's the part of the process where I'm working on a piece and it's the beginning stage, or I'm working on a piece and it's kind of the middle stage starting to come together. And then there's the dislike stage, which is the getting stuck. And then there's the, uh, the awesome stage, which kind of happens after I let go and I get re-inspired. And then there's the finishing it. And I was just trying to kind of visualize this concept of a couple different parts of the process where it's like, when you first begin a piece, it's not the same as pushing through to the end. So like my husband, he's working on a novel and he's what sounds like somewhere uh, midway perhaps, and he's gotten a little bit stuck. And one thing I was thinking about was that whether, whatever kind of art, or whatever kind of creating you're doing, it's important to let your art change as you change. This guy right here. I said, let your work of art change as you change. You must be willing to release your assumptions about where it will end up. And in small, I have, if you don't allow it to change, you'll get stuck. And this is, I think, especially true with long pieces. So if it's like a painting you're spending a month on, or you know, weeks, or if it's a novel, or if it's anything a little bit longer, then I think it's easy to lose inspiration uh, somewhere in the middle or toward the end. It just, you get kind of tired of it. You're like, uh, I don't feel inspired by it. I don't feel like finishing it. Or you get inspired for something else and you wanna just, you know, not finish this and go to that. And I think there's times where it's okay to just like, leave a piece and start something new. But if that's something you keep doing, then you'll never finish anything. And that doesn't feel good. That doesn't feel good at all. We want to finish pieces. <laughs> um, so yeah, I was just thinking about, it's important to let it change as you change because we wake up different every day. And maybe it's not drastic, but we are changing all the time and we're learning and we're growing. And when I made that piece behind me right there, it started off as something completely different. It was these two slightly alien looking type figures 
one with like a ripped open area where their heart should be and then the other one holding the person's heart. And I did it as an expression of some emotional stuff I was working through. And then as I kept going, I was, my heart was changing. I was working through that emotional stuff. I didn't, I didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't, I was done. And so I ended up starting this piece over top of it. And I just, I kept some of the original, like I've talked about this in a different video. I kept some of the original and I just added and added and I added. And as I changed, I allowed the piece to change with me and it became something really cool in the end that it wouldn't have if I had just decided this is exactly what this piece is and then tried to stick with it. And this is a little bit of a difficult concept because to some degree, I think planning can be really helpful. Like if you're writing a novel, uh, having an outline for chapters is probably a good idea. But then I also have a friend who's in the middle or end middle of a sci-fi novel that he's writing. And he said his method is he just starts writing and he just sees where it goes. Um, and for myself, I've discovered in the last year that I really like that style of painting where I don't come at it with a plan. I have no plan when I start any of my pieces. I just pick some colors that feel right. Maybe I stare at it for a moment and just get a feeling of like what I want to do. And then I just start. I just make a line, I just do something, put some colors on, whatever. <laughs> and uh, like this one right there behind me with the yellow shapes, that's what I did. I just, you know, threw some paint on, made the yellow shapes, threw on some collage paper, and I'll probably start on that one, like really start on it next week, and it'll become something cool. But I don't have a secure plan of like what I'm trying to do with a piece. And I don't think there's a right way to do this, but my personal opinion is that it is easier. It, it's more freeing. It's more freeing and it's more enjoyable if you let go of that control um, and you release into the process. And that does not necessarily mean not having any plan. It just means you can plan, but allow there to be flexibility and room. And if it changes, let it change and let it grow. And I think when you take that type of approach with your work, you're less likely to get just bored or uninspired or unexcited and want to jump onto the next thing because it, you don't know the end. You don't know the end of the story. When I do these pieces, I have no idea where it's going. I'm just along for the ride. <laughs> I'm just discovering as I go. And it's so fun because I can look at the finished product and I can be like, wow, this is awesome. And I feel like I'm just discovering it for the first time when I look at it, just like anybody else who might look at it for the first time. Because I, I was not like, oh yes, I planned out every brush stroke of this. Um, yeah, I don't... Not to say that, that it would be wrong to do that, but I just, I don't know that that's the best way. So hopefully that made sense. And that was a bit of a long rant, but hopefully you found something helpful in it. Uh, again, just like my main point, don't rush the inspiration stage. If you're starting, you know, a dance or a production or a, a novel or a poem or an art piece or whatever, whatever you're starting, sit in it, let yourself get inspired, allow yourself the space to take the rabbit trails and see where they go. And don't be afraid to let your work change as you change. Don't be afraid to let go of control over what the outcome is but um, practice releasing into the process and yeah, that just recognizing you don't have to have control, the burden is not on you, but you get to just discover and uncover and explore as you're creating. And it's just a world 
think of it more as like a world, not that you're constructing or making up, but a world that you are exploring and discovering what's there. Um, it's like the statue of David, you know, that he was just trying to uncover what was already inside. I like that idea. And again, just like map out your own process, sit down and think about it. Like wh where do you get inspired? Where do you get stuck? Where do you have the hardest time? Is it just starting? Is it just doing that first thing? Or do you get stuck later in the process? Or do you get stuck trying to finish it? So yeah, that's just my advice is to start paying attention, get curious about your process because you have one, whether you recognize it or not, it's there. Um, and maybe not fully developed, but it's there. So yeah, pay attention, maybe start to write it down if you notice something and start to get curious about where in your process you get stuck. And I totally recommend like, once you've figured some of this out, write it down and stick it somewhere where you will see it. Like if you have an art studio, write on the wall. Or if you're in your office or like wherever you create, put it somewhere so that when you start to just get stuck or whatever, it's just like a, it's a map. It's just a map to know where in the story you are. And that's, that can be super helpful. So yeah, um, <laughs> push through. Push through the times when you feel like it's just not working. Um, don't give up right away. I think most of us feel that at some point and it's just not finished yet. Just push through and practice letting go <laughs> of the control of the end product. And yeah, get curious. And I'm just repeating myself now, but I just think it's so important and it's helped me so much doing art full time. It's helped me so much to just understand that I have a process. So yeah, I hope you were encouraged and maybe, yeah, I just hope it made sense to you. Maybe you learned something, whatever. And if you try this out yourself, or if you have a process you want to share or something you think would help me even totally open to that and go ahead and leave a comment or whatever you want to do. So Thanks for joining me again, and I'll see you in the next video.